While this video says it's about AWS, the concepts in the video can generally be applied to any cloud. I want to share some of my best learnings that I made with my own startup on how do you reduce cloud costs because they can get ridiculous at times. Now make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hype this video before you move forward because this is gonna help you. I know it for a fact if you have deployed any piece of infrastructure for your startup on Amazon. Now I'll start with some most important things first. It is out of order so don't bite me if I suggest some more important things later. But first of all, I would probably put something like using spot instances. Now hear me out, a lot of workload inside of your cloud provider, inside your cloud platform can be done on spot instances. There is a lot of workload which is async. Imagine like you're building a system which has video transcoding pipeline, which has something that does some background processing, crunching of data, numbers, all of that. You can create your code base in such a way where that system, where that specific instance that you are creating for that work, it can be afforded to be interrupted. It, it is affordable to interrupt that. What it means is that let's say if you are running, you know, let's say you're running this AV processor, which is what we call in, internally at my company, which is like audio video processor. So it's like a video processor. If this is on spot versus if this is not on spot on a platform like AWS, you will basically get 80%, more than 75 to 85% cheaper. Spot instances are 75 to 85% cheaper and you can create an infrastructure where if this instance is, let's say, suddenly deleted, you can resume the work again. So you can create an instance again. Yes, it will require you some sort of configuration or state management in database, some sort of queuing system that keeps on refreshing the visibility of the item, but it's possible. Most people just don't think about it because you know they're just lazy that how do we even achieve that? So spot instances is the number one thing which can just directly reduce your bill by 75 to 85% on the compute side. The next big expense that I see generally is data transfer, right? I mean, let's be honest here, compute and data are two of the most expensive things on AWS, right? Compared to other platforms and other providers. Now on data transfer, you can use like, I mean, I'll put an asterisk over here because depending on your use cases, this might not be feasible, but you can use platforms like R2, which has $0 egress fees. You can use platforms like Bunny CDN, which have very less egress fees, $5 per TB, starts at $5 per TB, but it can also go down based on your, you know, usage. Now you see that egress on R2 is zero, but on R2, the read write operations are not free right on the object file. So they have like certain cost over here. As far as I remember, there is no cost of read write operations on Bunny. So we can do like a comparison. Sure. But there are a bunch of similar providers like Bunny and R2 as well, which you can take a look. But data transfer is also something that you can take a look. You can't minimize this if you're doing it with your machines themselves, because obviously there is no way you can just transfer or, you know, just avoid those costs. But you can absolutely do it for object store object files, which are, you know, just random files that people are downloading and accessing. So you Use a CDN, use a better CDN than AWS. Don't use AWS directly. S3 and even CloudFront is extremely expensive if you don't have like an enterprise deal with AWS. My third tip would be in order to save costs would be probably something like, you know, run everything low traffic on AWS Lambda right? So what I mean by this is if you're running everything low traffic on AWS Lambda, that effectively means what I'm saying in this is just remove your EC2 instances, remove something that is running 24 seven with something that can run occasionally or whenever you want, right? On AWS Lambda, you also have the ability to run cron jobs, right? So you can run specific events at specific timestamps, time duration. And if you're doing that on EC2, then you are running a machine for 720 hours a month, like the total number of hours a month. If you're doing it on AWS Lambda, you're just invoking it whenever you need it. And this guaranteed is going to be cheaper for you if you're not doing some crazy weird stuff, if you're not doing some heavy CPU computation, which takes a lot of memory, RAM and CPU time for doing all of that work, right? So shift your EC2 or shift your compute workload to serverless and especially the one which has low traffic, low to medium traffic, it could even be like a user facing endpoint that can also sit on AWS Lambda if you need it. High traffic lambdas are generally not favorable, then you have to shift back to EC2 because of the cost reasons, but keep everything low traffic, crons, all of that on AWS lambdas. The fourth point that I will have is probably something like don't use RDS, right? I mean, again, like applies 
on case by case basis might not be applicable for you but aws rds is not cost effective on the performance that you get from it right so i would recommend you to use something like you know planet scale at least just consider the pricing planet scale is not the sponsor they're not doing anything with me but generally what i've seen is that the pricing that planet scale offers or you know generally these platforms offer they are even though they are on aws but because they might have like better deals with aws they can offer you better pricing better availability and performance for the same dollar right so if you're spending a one dollar on aws for specific performance metrics you would probably get better performance on platforms like planet scale then there is neon as well they don't have a very good reputation with uptime but i feel that they are improving you can check it out as well again none of this is recommendation from my side so do your own due diligence but generally aws rds can be better optimized for cost structures if you're spending like a few thousand dollars on aws rds chances are that you can do it better on some other platform as well another point that i see very occasionally is cloudwatch log retention right if you go in your expenses breakdown if you see that there is a huge cost for cloudwatch logs you can actually see set a few days of retention on your logs right again google this up i would not show you the steps how to do that but this is something that i personally also discovered a little late and i have seen like people not knowing about this that you can actually retain logs only for let's say seven days or 30 days or you know 100 days or whatever and if you have a service which is very noisy if it's generating a lot of logs then it can actually get quite expensive so one is like you can obviously tweak around the log retention part the other is that you can also just in production disable logs which are are not relevant or which are not important right that is where those sort of things come into picture where you know you have something like vaughn and you know debug and verbose or whatever so you can make logs in their own categories and on production let's say you just disable debug logs and all of the other things right so you can do that another thing that i have seen now is you know if you just have floating ip addresses or maybe like not i should not use the word floating i don't know exactly what it might mean in aws terms but ip addresses and especially like ipv4 addresses because ipv4 as far as i remember is paid now on aws so you have to pay a specific amount and especially if they are also elastic elastic ips then they are also not free at all right so avoid this if you can with services which are not user facing because see most of us anyway would create an instance or whatever ec2 and we'll put it in in front of you know like something like cloudflare and all right so if you already have cloudflare which is receiving the user facing traffic and not your main instance directly then you probably don't need an ipv4 here right because you can just give it an ipv6 instead of this and cloudflare anyway would have ipv4 ipv6 dual stack over here to handle your users and it can just route back the traffic properly right if you are using cloudflare's orange proxy so this is also something that can save you a bunch of dollars if you are doing a lot of machines if you're creating a lot of machines which might need like which are using an ipv4 without any use case so you can turn that off yeah there are a bunch of more things that we can discuss but i feel that these are some of the best winners specifically like spot instances if you can do this like if there is a workload whereas there is a match you would have actually you know it'll be a really good feeling to just save 80 percent of your cost directly similarly with data transfer look into this this is also one of the biggest costs on aws and then again like the bunch of things that we have discussed so these are like big winners in my opinion but do let me know in the comments below what is your best suggestion for saving costs on aws in your experience in my experience these are like a few tips i would leave maybe like a few more comments or a few more insights as i get it but this would basically reduce your cost a lot if you implement all of them right so yeah that's pretty much it for this video make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one very soon